into the thing. Um, into the thing. Who are we? What are we into doing? Into the oh, thing. Yeah. Into oh. the thing. Into the thing and out of the thing and home before dark. I have no dark. idea what's going on right now. It was a into, into the, woods. the woods parody. Ah. Yeah. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Black Tower Podcast. Mm. Yeah. I am one I of your hosts, your Bajar Mahel, La Andrew. I don't know what fucking accent that was. I just did it. But there you go. <laughs> I am one of your other hosts. Your Aman Khan Mahel. I'm Daniel. Is this a thing we are doing now, yeah? Very I well. I am your Torvan Mahel. We are the boys from the Black Tower. We love towers. Ooh, that's a thing. We love wheels of time. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I get to kill white men for money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the fatter they are, the bigger the reward. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was so weird. Why did you go to a different accent when you were already I was it? trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's been a fun day. It's really enjoyable. We're enjoying ourselves. Oh, God. It's, it's been, been a, a busy fucking sure. week. Yeah. I started off my work week this day. Monday. I left Friday and I'd gotten my ticket queue at work down to six. I walked in Monday and now have a total of 45 tickets. They Gross. dropped 37 off them on me Monday. You're the badass, though. That's that's a good thing, though. Most Look of them are going to be closed next here. Monday because people don't know how to fucking answer an email. It doesn't matter. You're going to be at, in Utah soon enough. Yeah, Working with hopefully. me. We're hopefully. going to be co-workers. I'm hoping. I'm, I'm wishing and hoping and praying <laughs> and hoping and wishing. Pray to the Lord Dragon for your salvation. <laughs> If I pray hard enough to the Lord Dragon, maybe he'll bring me to Utah. Hello, everyone. Everyone loves merchandise. Whatever it's about, It's people love to get it for whatever reason. For holidays, for birthdays, for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa presents, whatever kind of thing. Why not give you another place to where you can go and get some awesome merch? Popular for all kinds of different reasons. This is New Creations by Jen. It's an amazing shop where you can find all sorts of Will of Time inspired merch. It's also the only place where you can go and join the Frosty Mug Society. To give an example, our own Black Tower podcast, Frosty Mug, is a part of the Frosty Mug Society. Now, there are a total of six as of the time that I'm talking now, Frosty Mugs and the Frosty Mug Society on New Creations by Jen. Uh, and those span several different content creators from the Wheel of Time content creator community. You can go and get the Black Tower Podcast one, Malkir Talks, Talk Around Riyadh, The Will Reads, The Will Weaves, and of course, Weekly Will News. All six of those content creators, again, including us, have frosty mugs, and they all look super dope. Jen does an amazing job, so make sure you go and get one and join the frosty mug society beyond the mugs there are uh the frosty mugs there are regular mugs that you can get there are t-shirts that you can get with all kinds of different designs on them that are inspired or by the uh the content creator uh platform suggestions they've sent in or just overall will of time inspired items uh, you can find uh, men's wear ladies wear unisex wear hats uh, all kinds of really dope stuff now if you don't want to just get content creator based stuff and you want will more just uh wheel of time inspired stuff make sure you check out weekly will news's section of new creations by jen and that's where you can find all things from uh, gator shufas to out there forms teas to dice cups and die uh to coasters to just everything that we have seen rob with weekly will news put out over uh, forever and you can find it here under the Weekly Well News on New Creations by Jen. This is an epic site that is only overshadowed by how epic the items and the owners are. 
Again, Rob and Jen put in a ton of work. They work really well together and really well with uh, the creators that want to be a part of this. So it's fantastic. So make sure you head on over to newcreationsbygen.com and get yourself your very own Black Tower Podcast Frosty Mug. And while you're there, make sure you pick up uh, anything from the vast assortment of Wheel of Time inspired merchandise. Gateways, baby. Talk to Andrew. Thank hey, you for tuning uh, in tonight. We have Josh, a is there some parallel? Are we now I calling Rand didn't... the founder of Mormon, uh, the Mormon faith? Oh, God. He does no. have three wives. Oh, so... no. <laughs> no. Okay. It's I mean, a totally he, different kind of insanity. He drinks and uses a whole bunch of different drugs. So. <laughs> he does. I'm high on Jesus, he man. Drink. He does. I'm high on Jesus. I and also half. I love the memes where That's it's not. like <laughs> I love the memes where it's like uh you know the the youth pastors. <laughs> yeah, I've got Yeah, I like to get high. High on the word of God. Yeah, I'm I'm dummy thick. Thick dummy with the thick. love of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> We've got an awesome show for you tonight. We decided uh, we wanted to be clickbaity motherfuckers. Clickbait! Get some inspiration from the assholes. I mean, the people over at BuzzFeed. And we wanted to cover 10 things you may not know about the Wheel of Time. And first and foremost, we're going to need to throw on some protection because this is going to be little known things that span. The entire book series. So if you are not done with the series, then you're going to get spoiled and you're going to be mad and then you're going to complain to us and then we're going to show you this where I told you to put on <laughs> the <laughs> condom and then you're going to feel like a dummy. And then we're going to say, I congratulations, you. you played yourself. <laughs> we you honestly yourself. did. No. We honestly did wrestle with the idea of literally calling it 10 things you may not have known about the Wheel of Time and literally just, number one, Randall Thor is the Dragon Reborn. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. That's I hate those buzzers. I, no, I didn't say we were going before. to. It's when they do that on like Star t- Wars. horrible they are. I said we talked about it. things you didn't know about Star Wars. They get so, like, like, like high and There's mighty a tone. in your face yeah. about it. There's a tone. There and is. Then they, Stupid things like, like again, this is they, they'll do this with every series, and it's literally just have you seen the whole thing? Like, because if you've seen the whole thing, you know, five of the ten things. Did you, you know Luke Skywalker's know. lightsaber was green? Fuck you, yeah. yeah. Wait, anybody did you who know, saw the movie knew that. Well, and like half the time, they do do things like along <laughs> that line <laughs> where they're like, where they're like. Did you know that Luke Skywalker starts the movies with a blue lightsaber, but by the end it's green? And you're like, how would you have not noticed that? Like, it's not quite as bad as the third fact is Darth Vader is Luke's father. And you're like, just watch the movie. <laughs> like, if you have seen the movie, you know this. And so now that we've got spoiler condom on, you want to jam it on. Uh, from book one all the way down to book 14. Make sure that you're you're fully protected. Um, in fact, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and pinch the tip uh, and make sure that you've also got new spring in there. Oh, oh, oh. Andrew uh, didn't but pinch it's the a tip. Small, but it's a small book. It's just a, it's just a tip pinch. You're I know fine. enough it's... of what happens. Exactly, yeah. Andrew knows enough. I won't be giving you anything you didn't know about New Spring. <laughs> because I don't know what you don't know about Andrew's, New Spring. Andrew's going to go ahead and try to be all clever and tell you what you didn't know about New Spring, and we're all going to be like, yeah, we're read gonna... the book. It's <laughs> yeah. in there. It just says that or, blatantly. Or he'd be like, or he'd be like saying something about uh, like some shit that never even happened, and everybody's being like, yeah, I didn't know that happened at all. Yeah, nobody knows it happened because it didn't fucking happen. We just made it up. <laughs> it's a removed scene. But, but again, this is super important, guys, for the 10 things. These are all going to, not all of them are going to be mind boggling because when it comes right down to it, we don't necessarily have so much more insight into the books 
than you know the vast majority of the community and so we're not going to like make your brain explode probably this is so i think it's time to let everyone know know, this is probably something that would like the title would more adequately apply for people that are listening like after the series has come out sure yeah yeah, yeah. that makes time you guys knew that matt hatch actually comes to me for his wheel of time uh, no, no, at all. This, yeah, uh huh, yeah. You just have, I do, I think, uh, no, so, just like chilling. So, he'll confirm yeah. that for me, uh, Sunday, yeah, he right? will. So, yeah. just you know, this <laughs> right here, this is totally it. This is not a random notebook that I grabbed out of my, uh, yeah, out of my drawer. Yeah, it tells me something weird with your green screen because a lot of the pages looked really, really barren, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, again, guys, this is not going to be, and now that we've put on our spoiler condom, everyone knows you have seven seconds to leave before <laughs> you I have seven seconds ruin to comply. everything. Uh, seven, six, five, four, three, two. These are not things like Moraine wasn't dead. Because if you oh! read the series, you know that shit. It's obvious. Like, yes. Rand is the dragon reborn. Moraine doesn't actually die. Lanfear is Selene. Like, these are super obvious things that just are so clickbaity. Like, the worst clickbaity. We, sh- we are actually going to have, like, ten or so little-known facts about the Wheel of Time, and we're going to explore them a little. So, without any further ado... You say, as we need to have some ado... But we'll make it very short. Guys, make sure that you go and you check out uh, the Crystal Barista. Head over to crystalbarista.com and check out oh, all yeah. of her amazing yeah. epic stuff. She is a long-term sponsor of not just our stupidity and collective antics, but especially Josh's uh, much longer stretching stupidity and antics, only because she's been around him longer. Uh, so go and check that out. You can find her on Facebook at uh, Rock Pick R O C K P I C K. You know Facebook.com forward slash. You know how URLs work. If you don't, ask your grandchildren. Um, uh, she's got Instagram. Uh, she's got a Twitter, uh, and I think Twitter is uh, Crystal Barista as well. Um, but go. It might be. Either way, if you go to crystalbarista.com and you scroll down on the left-hand side, if you're on a computer, you can see all the links to all of the stuff she has and uh, all the events that are coming up and she's doing, especially if you're a local in Utah. Looking at you, sexy more shuddy. Um, But uh, what else? Uh, Head over to the the greatblight.com. Check out all the great stuff Nate Bliss and his team are doing there. Uh, including a spoiler-friendly wiki, as well as a very comprehensive list of all Wheel of Time content creators as far as, like, broken down into YouTube, podcast, artist, all that dope stuff. Uh, and you can check them all out there. Uh, there's more stuff. Uh, we'll throw it in at random other parts of the episode, which will probably be the end because I'll probably forget until then, until I'm editing, and then when you rewatch this or listen to this back, it'll be in a completely different spot than when we say it in the episode because the magic and power of editing uh yeah. that also being said if you catch this episode before uh the 28th which is uh four ish days from now uh you can catch me over on the dusty wheel where we'll be doing a debate um pause because i forgot what it's about pause editor's note cut this part out where i look like a dumbass to our patrons you get to see this yeah nobody else does i I don't it's not even in the description is it in the title oh it's a live debate uh about the amazon prime news so that of course will be uh february 28th at 4 p.m eastern on youtube over at the dusty wheel uh if you don't know how to find the dusty wheel then there's no hope for you because if you can't find the dusty wheel, you can't find the way to plant your asshole on the toilet before you use the restroom. Accurate. <laughs> Just calling it how it is. 
Because the old adage of you don't know your asshole, your elbow from an asshole, or your asshole from a hole in the ground, or whatever it is. I don't. All right. So brain just stopped working there, like completely, just shut down. They have the best little known fact. Uh, I, I don't think, like I that. Think I, I, think I, I think I got a good one. Definitely got a good one. We can we can let everybody else rate them and be like, hey, that was a really good one. You know, whether you knew it or not, be like, hey, that was a good one. Not a lot of people remember that, or I haven't thought about that. I, I can tell you the first only one that I have right now is uh, more of like a thought or it's kind of small theory than anything else. But these don't have to be like big groundbreaking things. Like we're not going to suddenly reveal like some character secret that nobody knows about. So some of you are going to be very disappointed with our performance. I'm okay with that. I'm used to it. <laughs> Take that for what you will. Some of you will enjoy it. We're just going to uh, and, and BS. But anyway, moving on to the topic. Josh, let's start with you uh, because you actually suggested this topic. I did suggest this topic because I thought it would be fun. Yes, you um, definitely suggested this topic. 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 <clears throat> Anybody else getting like a high pitched? I thought it was my earbuds. I've been I like switching like, my earbuds. I thought it was my tinnitus. Well, my tinnitus is always there. I'm not. Definitely I'm not getting anything. Oh, huh. then that's probably who's causing it. It's, it's your tinnitus and my tinnitus. Okay, our tinnitus is just syncing up. Never right. mind. There it is again. Is that better? I I mean I don't hear it now, but it was happening randomly. Could you guys okay. say that in Discord or is it too low for like anybody's mic to pick up? And it, we just sound like babbling drunk idiots. Snake and Fox heard it. And more shoddy heard it. We're not fucking crazy. All right. Well, all of you crazy. guys have tinnitus all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new shirt idea. I got my tinnitus at the Black Tower podcast. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. All right. I love anyway, it. Let's get cracking on with this episode. Uh, Josh, you said that you have one that you think is pretty good. Hopefully it is pretty good and makes me think of other things beyond what I have right now uh, because I've been too busy to do what I should have done a week ago. So the farmer... Okay, so here's mine. Okay, well, here's my first one. This is the one that I thought of because this is the one that makes me go like, what? Like, that's so cool. There's like 3,000 characters in this world. And so for this to kind of circle back around like is really cool. For me and i like that the farmer in eye of the world who gives rand and matt a ride in to camelin is the same farmer who welcomes rand off of the mountain and gathers up all the beautiful apples in a memory of light after rand is one with nature and is able to fight back the Dark One's touch on the Earth. Is that yeah. Almond Bunt? Is it Almond Bunt? I can't remember his name. It is. Almond Bunt. That would explain and then why there the we go. We've got so sexy more. We got our unofficial fact checker keeping it. See, that's the other reason this one's going to be fun. Is our fact checker is going to be like, listen here, you bullshit. Listen, that's guys, bullshit. you're going to have to cut that one out. Everybody knows that one. That's not a secret. Fucking ant, try again. <laughs> I expect more the... from... Anyway, no, but I, I just think I that's so more cool. From like it, they, even do, they even do like a, a small lip service where they talk about he had to leave Camelin because shit was just getting too crazy. And his family lived and worked in the orchards at, you know... Uh, uh, Tarvalin and they needed help and so he's like all right come on let's pack up and go I mean he's a good man does did he you sound know, like that did you know when he welcomes Rand down from the mountain from the mountain that is not the last time we see Almond Bunt what we see him again he is last seen at the field of Merlor when Matt is showing how to make palisades because Matt makes the comment that his skin is so leathery the Trolloc swords would bounce off of it. So, little known fact on your little known fact. Dude! So, hey. fact, little known fact number one, Almond Bunt is a secret badass 
much like Tam Al Thor was. He's like one also, of those tertiary characters I'm that gonna, manages to survive all the way through the end. Also, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the call right now. It is never stated in the books, but I bet you dollars to donuts that Almond Bunt, before they figure out a system, ferries people from Camelin to the Black Tower to get tested. Just saying. I I'm, believe it. I'm pretty if, sure if, that he puts people in his fucking wagon would. and carries them to the Black Tower and then comes back to Camelin before they figure out their system. If anyone would, I would imagine it would be Almond because he seems like such a pragmatic. See, and this is the thing. He's such a minor character, but we already have so much information about his behavior yeah. that we can like surmise how he might be. And he might be one of these people that have been like, Tom and Gaiden's coming. Oh, there's a guy over there wanting I men to feel fight it for the in dragon. My bones. Everyone who wants to fight for the dragon, load up in my cart. I'd be going back and forth. I don't know why he's Irish. Almond Bunt is Irish. No, man. that's fucking perfect. I mean, that is, that is that that almost Almond Bunt. That uh, amazing. I love it. Unless he's unless he's like the the other. He either has to be that, or he has to be. Oh, Tarman Guidance coming. Everyone <laughs> wants to play for the dragon. Getting my cart. Is no he Elvis now? The tower. <laughs> <laughs> all right who's next all right so i have another one uh, that is along the same lines of characters that we see again who you would not expect to see and also who the payoff on them is very surprising so rand and matt are on their way uh, from basically uh, Sh- Shadar Logoth to Camelin. And this is after they've done everything in Whitebridge. This is after they've left Tom. They get uh, met along the way at you know a number of different towns by a number of different people who are very interested in either fucking them right up or... Uh, turning them to the shadow or something along those lines. Or the most notable them. thing is, you know, Mr. Gold in uh, in Four Kings. However, there is one very minor character who shows up in an inn oh, in yeah. one of the towns named Pater. And he is absolutely a dark friend. Like, it is not even a question that this guy is a dark friend, even though he's very scared of what he is, basically. Like, he is not going to tell you. Like, he's not going to confirm it. He's not going to whatever. But he is. He absolutely is. Uh, And he comes in and he threatens them. And they basically kick him the fuck out and go, dude, you're... clocks him right in the face. He does. He does. He punches him right in the face, calls him a dark friend to his face, and gets him kicked out of the end. Now, fast forward a number of books, and there is a boy, man, young young man, who shows up at an audience with more gays. Now, she's not queen at this time. It, it's not that she is... Uh, I well, mean, she is. She is she queen, is. but she's a prisoner in Amadicia. Yes. Well, uh, political, uh, unwitting... Unwilling political attache or something yes. like that. She's You're a fine to leave whenever you want, mysteriously hangs people you were friends with. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it, exactly. You that. are free so to leave. I don't know. Am I? Are you? Are you? Are you? <laughs> and he gets an audience with more gays and says, I know who you are. I want to help you. My uncle and I are basically loyal subjects. And we want to help you escape from Amadisia. Well, this is one of the rare moments where we already know who somebody is, even though you might not realize that you know who somebody is. Because this is the same friend who shows up in the inn and Matt punches him in the face. And then very shortly after, when it doesn't work out and Morghese is still a prisoner... And she kind of like throws in her lot with them, but only slightly because she knows how this works because she's no idiot. 
Peter and his uncle get hanged for being dark friends. By Eamon like, Valda. It's like one of the first times that well, the White Cloaks actually get it right. But they didn't. They got it right for the wrong reason, though. <laughs> they did. I know. That's so funny. <laughs> White Cloaks, why do you suck so bad? They inadvertently clear, hung clear, their dark this is Peter by the neck. This is Peter, Peter, however you say his name. Peter. Daniel. Yeah. Peter. Hey, this is Peter Charles. Connell. Not to yes. be confused with Peter Du Farana Akon or Peter Nashimon. Or Na- Nachimon, Peter Nachimon. Maximov. That's oh wait, that's Pietro. Sorry. That's Pietro. That's Pietro. You, you 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 fail. Little known I mean, fact, fair, Pietro Maximov. He looks was, differently in certain series. Yeah, it's about she recast Peter? <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what that's from, then you need to fucking get Disney Plus and go and watch it. Yeah. Because I'm only avoiding spoilers until I have finished the series. After then, it's free game. So you got two weeks from the time we're recording now. Two weeks. Two weeks. All right. So, yeah, there we go. That's mine. Uh, Again, it's definitely just a lesser known character popping up, which to me is just, again, so fascinating of how interlocked Robert Jordan made his story. And yes. It's hard to say a little bit with any like super (laughs) certainty how much of it he (laughs) how much of it was you know 100% intended and how much he was just like hey this would be fun Uh, but it definitely seems like a lot of it was intentional so there you go it's so amazing that Robert Jordan was so, or I guess, you know, Jim, as his friends call him, was so invested in this story that he could do this and it worked. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh shit, I ran out of characters and I don't want to make up another character. I'll just throw someone else. It worked. Like he did such a good job of it. It was, I, I really appreciate and love the consistency there. I could just imagine yep. RJ sitting there like with notes for like for uh for Bunt and uh Connell. I don't I default the last names. I know why. Anyway, sure. Just yeah, imagine him fine. sitting there like making notes under them, like he's writing the story, and then he's like, at this point, this guy would be here. Continue story, <laughs> right? this guy would be here, and this guy and this person and this cool. girl and this lady. Oh, and all the assholes are over here. I remember watching an interview with him too. And they were asking him like, they were like, dude, like there's so many characters here. How do you keep track? And he was like, I keep a lot of notes. <laughs> and I was like, you'd have to. It'll be hilarious. Yeah. He was like, honestly, five pages after I introduce a character, if they're not still on the page, I forget who they are. <laughs> and I think I thought of a new name only to go back and see that I've used the name. So I just changed the last name <laughs> or, it's like I can't tell you how many times I have created the same S name to <laughs> die and saw that I fucked up and just had to go back and change the rest of their name, but leave it as S because <laughs> I know, but nobody else knows. Oh shit. That would just be hilarious. Like he was just like chaotic, just chaotic neutral with his writing. I love it. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, Andrew. Andrew. All right, you're so up, buddy. Mine isn't anything that is necessarily explicitly stated or confirmed but i think the way things happen around the scene essentially confirm it and it's something that i didn't really think of when i read it and i really hadn't thought about it that much but uh in my looking uh that was totally uh extensive and lasted for a week before this episode and totally wasn't into the first (laughs) 10 minutes of the episode i saw something that made me like huh and it is, it happens in the Shadow Rising right after Rand finishes uh, traumatizing Barrelane by fighting all of his mirror selves. And he has that confrontation uh, with Moraine where he's not backing down, even though he's all fucked up. And she's not backing down. And she looks over, uh, they both look over and glance over at a chest. And the glasses on top of the chest gets brushed off. This is a pair in POV chapter. The glass just brushes itself off. And then Rand goes and sits down. And the thought is that Moraine, already understanding the kind of person that Rand is and what's going on with him, 
seeing how utterly exhausted and tired he is, but also knowing that he is fighting everything he can to not lose face in front of anybody else. She's the one that weaves and brushes it off to leave it open that maybe he did it because he wants to so that he can sit down and rest. And she's looking at him the way that she does. And she's like, I know you're fucking beyond exhausted and you, you, you fucking need to rest. And it fits so well with how forward thinking and intuitive Moraine is and how fucking woolheaded stubborn Rand is. Well, and of course, that lends itself so much to Moraine really coming around to how she needs to talk to and, you know, press and not press and suggest and things to Rand. Because it is that idea of, all right, he's smart enough and woolheaded enough and stubborn enough and whatnot to, bless you, not allow me to just push him in the direction I want him to go. But if I brush off the chest and give him somewhere to sit, nine times out of 10, Randall go sit on the fucking chest. I mean, she, they say over and over again that her job, their, their job as the Aes Sedai is not to control the dragon reborn, but to guide him to where he needs to be. That's the thing she does. She literally just goes. Who actually fucking does that? Yeah, she literally just brushes it off and is like, "If you want to sit, sit, relax. You and I know you're fucking about to fall over. If you don't, you don't, and you lose face and you fall over. Your move, (laughs) Mister Dragon. Moraine is. (laughs) God, she's so good because. She's a bitch. Okay, first off, let me just say she she's a bitch. She absolutely is. But but she's she a bad not, bitch, though. No. She, you know <laughs> she is. You know she is. Also, side note, you guys know that Winter is Coming.net is going to have another best heroes bracket in March. And I swear to the dragon himself. If you're not there voting for Wheel of Time, peeps, right, I will profit. rain bale fire down on you. We cannot let Wheel of Time. That was our first one last year. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yep. Right, last Masama. year, last March, when Moraine won over <laughs> Lucifer by literally like the smallest of margins. Like, I think it was within 10 votes. Like, there were not thousands like the guy's name. of votes. The prophet of the dragon. What the fuck is his name? Masima. That one. Yeah. Masama was Mr. Very Seaman. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I just Mr. let you have Seaman. that one until you <laughs> corrected yourself. No, it, congratulations. You corrected your Mr. Seaman Dagger. The thing is, is that Moraine oh, only Dagger. does as white as the dragon's tooth. She does what she has to do, literally to save the world. Like this yeah. isn't like. This This isn't a get rich, you know, she's not looking to make money. She's not looking to conquer and gain influence. She's not looking, there's none of This is not Rosamund Pike's character in I Care A Lot. This is Rosamund Pike's character in The Wheel of Time, motherfuckers. And and I think that's why it's such a strange bit to like really kind of wrap your head around. Because 99% of all villains or heroes are looking to gain money fame well you know whatever the oh, prestige standard whatever game the game case game may game. be yeah. she is literally doing everything she's doing to save the world yep that that's sure. a lot to wrap your head around it and is so and it's so she's... surprising on some levels when she is that gentle because on right? some levels again you're standing there with someone who is so so powerful and so necessary and again as you know one of our patrons just said she tells them in the very first book i will kill you rather than let the shadow take you the stakes are that high the stakes are so high that if i can't protect you if i can't keep you safe i'd rather have you dead yes because the world the world would rather have you (laughs) dead flicker i would again lose theron right no but 
but and it's, so it's this such is a like beautiful moments moment. of pure gentleness that almost seem wrong unless you actually know people. You want to talk about a woman who is <laughs> smart, capable, but who can also be motherly and nurturing and stern and like Moraine has it all. She, she is does. one of the best female fantasy characters ever written. And she I is. will die on this hill. Like oh it's it's a great hill. This she... is the dragon mount of <laughs> <laughs> I will die on this dragon mount. <laughs> Josh Rice and <laughs> the Finn Moraine does he ride alone? <laughs> How many? Fuck! How many, I will have a baby on this motherfucking hill so that he can eventually I'll have a baby on this hill. <laughs> this is going to be a watt candy for another pre-recording, but I'm going to give you all a teaser right now. Oh. How many other madmen went to Dragon Mount to end themselves the same way the dragon did? And scene. Okay. So, I just got completely distracted by the fact that my eyes saw Daniel's mug as more metal than mug, and I thought he was just randomly holding a fucking butcher's like cleaver for some. <laughs> it's been a long fucking day and a long fucking. It's Andrew been a long has day. been to Andrew. Would you like oh. some wine, buddy? Yeah. At this so, point, <laughs> sure. This why not? I'll probably this just very sleep it off. Specific cup of wine. I feel like I feel like there's mm. gonna be a bunch of memes like with the whole wine, you know, thing. It's like. Here, have some have some wine, Gen C. Jokes on you. I want this wine. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. I'm into that shit. You fool. <laughs> you fell victim to the classic blunder. No, I just I love the the memes that are gonna happen, the meme videos of uh the the person who the Ashaman who is in charge of that particular service on their first day, where they go ahead and pour in the pour in the stuff into the wine and then mix it around with their finger and then lick their finger. Oh, yeah. No, not like sexily. Like they I just didn't... licked the you poison pervert. off. You think I'm and sexy? Then die. I mean, maybe? Okay, that's less <laughs> sexy. <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, I really like that one. That one's That's a good one. Andrew. That is uh, a good one. Coming on back around. Josh, what you got? Okay, this one was... <laughs> uh, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny, Prince. Yes. Nothing. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what's happening, once again, <laughs> we've got some shenaniganry happening in the live chat. Shenanigans. Fuck yeah. Uh, my next one is one that I was actually... I will pistol whip the next person who says shenanigans. <laughs> One that I think seems kind of obvious, but I don't know if there's a lot of people who has made this connection. And I just want to, I, if you've already made this connection, you know, good on you, but I feel like there's a lot of people out there who maybe haven't. And this involves Shadar Logoth. And this was something that was brought to light um, with the reveal of the dagger by Wat on Prime. Thank you so much. And it started being a lot of discussion about, you know, the images that we see there. And people started saying, hey, what about Mordeth going to the Finns? And that's where Ooh. they developed this darkness. And Innkeeper Hatch did confirm that that is canon. Mordeth did, in fact, visit the Finns. Now, what do we know about the Finns? Did Marine he also gets... visit the Swedes? Super. Yeah. And the Danish. <laughs> What's the Danish? There's only two what things I hate. Do? People who are intolerant, intolerant of other cultures. And, and the, the Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our movie quote for the night. If you know what it is, leave a comment on our YouTube or on our Podbean or here in the live chat. Indeed. Um, but also, if you know what it is, you should pat yourself on the back for being a very fortunate and cultured human being. Indeed, agree. So, Moraine, Moraine actually. <laughs> That's not your back. There's a it scene is when I'm turned where away they from you. all go through the red Terangriel, the red door Terangriel. Matt, Rand, and Moraine all end up going <laughs> at the same time. At the same time, which is weird, but 
you know, whatever. And so there's lots of no, saber not. happening. That's Tavir in both. That's that's it is, there is a lot of Tavir ness happening. Yeah. Well, Moraine's like very concerned, like, what did you say? What did you say? And Matt and Rand are both like, Oh, what? What are you talking about? And Moraine gives them the sternest of warnings. Do not ask about the shadow. Like things touching the shadow and darkness tend to have some pretty ridiculously disgusting and unaffected side effects. It's like in the community Redonkadon. when they're talking about wishes and the yeah. uh, Britta's like, I wish for the end of all wars. And they're like, no, don't do that. Unintended consequences. She's like, what could be bad about uh, wishing the end of all wars? And he's like, uh, Star Wars. Uh, you know, and he starts listing off yeah. all of the, <laughs> the wars that are good. In this sense, when you go to the fins, especially when you ask about things that touch the shadow, you're really taking a huge risk. In this you case, are. Mordeth went into the Tirangrial, asked for a way to defeat the shadow, or I, we don't know what his wording was. We don't know what he asked. We don't yep. know the price paid, and we don't know the gift given. But we do know that he did go to the fence, and when he came uh, back, that's, that's wrong. Yeah. We do know the price paid and the gift given for Mordeth. Yeah. Oh, sorry, never mind. Maybe I don't know. Well, for some so reason, I just heard price paid and gift given, and I thought to Matt. be a price paid because he went to see the alefin, not the eelfin. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. We don't we don't know the specifics of that interaction. Sure, I I agree with that sentiment. That is I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm sure we don't know Foxes how it played out we in our discord would be willing to tell you for a price <laughs> <laughs> and so no but he comes back with I could tell you all the secrets but then I'd have to take your eye and or fin -fin 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 -fin. and or whatever the case may be he comes back with something takes it back to Aridol and says hey guys we're going to beat the shadow with ta-da and it turns out that yeah they did beat the shadow and to this day when we get to this point in the story it's been a thousand years and the shadow still fears the walls of aridol the walls of shadar logoth but they defeated yep. the shadow yeah they also just defeated themselves it's the it's the classic. I mean, the Aelfin and the Yilfin to me are such classic examples of the Dijin. I mean, that's what they are. Effective yes. is the idea that when you say, huh, "Yeah, I wish for a penis that touches the floor," they just shorten your legs to the point where your penis touches the floor. Like when you say, "I consequences. hope for all wars to end," yeah, they stop all fighting from ending. But now you also can't have a bunch of good things, you know, that, that have war in the title or whatever. <laughs> you know, is that unintended consequences? It is that, you know, idea of when you have an entity that is actively trying to game you, you have to be incredibly clear about going ahead and asking for something in such a way that the consequences can be only so large that you end up doing the good that you want rather than the harm. Oh my god, it was one gif. Fucking Jesus. I don't know what's funnier. Perfect. The fact that that's it all it took to perfect. break Josh or... Or how hard God. Josh is trying not to laugh audibly to over you, you talking. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it was great. It was perfect. I, no, again. I had an ex-girlfriend that did the God. same thing. <laughs> let you finish? She was laughing and covered her face. I was trying to let you finish. Oh, shit. Very traumatic moment oh. in my early childhood. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That was perfect. 15 still sounds like a child. No, again, that's so. one of the... Actually, 17 and under sounds like a child exactly. to me. So, the fucking. But that's actually that. one of the reasons that I love the Aelfin and the Eelfin so much as the character or as, as the device that they are. And I love that they don't just live in the Red Door Tarangrial where Moraine, Rand, and Matt go once. 
to see the Aelfin. And then Matt shows up once to see the Aelfin. There is a payoff. There is more to them. We get to see more of them rather than just being the like, it's the payoff of the genie in Aladdin. It's not just the plot device to get Aladdin where he needs to go. It's its own yes. character. It's its own entity. It has personality. It has, you know, all of these different things where you actually get to see that and you actually get to explore that instead of just being like, plot device! Like, because that's annoying. I feel like the way you did plot device is like the vocal equivalent of spirit fingers. Yeah. And I love it. That's uh, how plot it. device it works, really though. They're just spirit fingers? Yeah. yeah. Plot yeah. device! You know what? The next time I make overpowered oh armor in Minecraft, I'm literally just going to call it plot yes, device. That's perfect. If you haven't made one... You can never defeat my armor. armor. Plot device. If you I'm haven't say... already made one that's called Tavirin, I am so angry. And if the next That's what I'm going to name the sword. Hard... Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I now have a name for the sword and the armor in the Minecraft. Bless you. If I made a sword that was the strongest sword in Minecraft, it would definitely be called Kindness. Speaking of Minecraft, <laughs> we're still playtesting the server, but by the time you're listening to this, it might be open hey. to patrons. And depending okay. on uh, how many patrons uh, come in and kind of like what's going on with it right then and there, uh, we'll do it for two weeks to a month where it is only... Uh, us, well, well, only us as the Black Tower Podcast, the Mod Pack creator, Morden, and those patrons have access to the server, and you will keep everything you make during that time. You keep or what gather you or whatever. One, one thing I need to throw out real quick because I feel like this deserves to be on the list because I'm looking at this going, wait, what? Is and it, I just is this completed your a reread. No, in wait, our live chat, sort of with his leather on back. Oh, okay. Oh, I got a Snapchat from Josh. I wonder what it's about. Is it his dick? No, but his yes. background looks drastically different. <laughs> Grab him by the dick! <laughs> Give him the old dick twist! I... I don't know like how I missed this in my several rereads. Okay? <clears throat> but it has been brought to light in our live chat that Perrin sees the Elfin and Eelfin fighting alongside the mankind in, in, in the last battle. Yep. I had no idea they were there! Uh, so again, it's not... One of the reasons that I, I missed it the first time around is that, again, this is Perrin fighting Slayer. And so they're not actually fighting in the real world Tarman Gaiden. They are fighting in Teleren Riyadh, effectively. But the battle but they is are still there. real. It's they not real. There. It's so in your mind. Real. It's not. It's not. It's not just a weave. I mean, it is, but it's not. <laughs> all the heavens but, and all the hells are within is, you. There's a bonus movie quote, and if you get that one, fucking tag me, and I'll do something for you. I don't, it's not not like not like that. I got three dollars. Do something to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. I love you. It is interesting <laughs> that they're not in the real world. They, real. I is this the real life, or is this just fantasy? Like so again, the it is no escape from reality. It is also interesting to think about the fact that what damage did Matt do to the seal holding the fin where they are right, when though? he escapes from the Tower of Genji? Like, and so no, it, for really real. is, it really is kind of a mind fuck of like, okay, well, now we don't even really know what the rules 100% were for the fin. And now we're being like, hey, and also the rules are changed because Matt fucked shit up. I and would then, say, yeah, it's a lot. They're the ultimate wild card. Basically. No, I, I agree with that. The it's, Finn it's, really are kind of the 
they're just so scary. Like, yeah, they're they're they are the chaotic neutral of the series. If you want a brilliant <laughs> uh, example of chaotic uh, neutral, uh, that's them. I feel like actually that's not true. Okay, chaotic I neutral. Feel like when... I feel like the ale fin are actually chaotic neutral, and the eel fin are actually lawful evil. That was nice because they, they do push. have a very incredibly intense code that they follow. Well, but both they of try. Them do. Sure, but the eel fin even more so that affects others. Because the eel fin, it mostly affects them. With the eel fin, they're like, no, no, we fucking put it on you too, bitch. Well, but that's, but that is the agreement. Sure, no, I I would say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. With your chaotic lawful. Chaotic lawful, there we go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. That's a, yeah, that's it much should better. be an alignment. It absolutely should. Chaotic lawful. But yeah, yeah, so so yeah. Um so there you go. I like that one. That one's All good. right. Here's mine. And those of you in the live chat, listen up. Daniel Josh, you can't answer this yet. Okay. But pay attention. Listen, get your fingers ready on your keyboard because if you can answer my question within... Answer me, my riddles three. We'll we'll give it like eight seconds because I want to make it short enough where even the fastest person can't Google it real quick. All right, so get get yourselves ready. And if you can answer the following question... (laughs) More shouting already won. uh, You'll you'll get something. (laughs) Only for the live listeners, you guys on YouTube, this is why you should come over, join our Patreon, and come in and live listen, because occasionally Andrew does things like this without consulting his fellow co-host. But I'm also going to be the one that pays for it. So, it's (laughs) fine. All right. Here's the question. What is the name and the origin Aja of the first ever Amarillin to be stilled? You have seven seconds. Okay, only more shot he's typing, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, the, the dots went still, means he's not actively oh. typing. Honor code. <laughs> oh, you were so, you were half right. You were half right? Half right. The very first sister to ever, Omerlin. or very first Amarlin to ever be stilled was, in fact, of the Red Aja. And her name was Tetsuan, T-E-T-S-U-A-N. And she was stilled because uh, King Amon, we've heard that fucker's name before. Yep. After he pulled, uh, he answered pleas from the leaders of the Ten Nations to help them, but realized that he overextended his army and that Manethrin was at high risk. So he pulled back his military to try to assist Manethrin. And the uh, and Amon sent messengers to all the allied nations and a special plea directly to Tetsuan asking for aid. And it is believed that due to her own bad experience in childhood or her childhood hatred of Eldrin, that she selfishly chose to betray Manethrin. This <laughs> what a bitch. bitch slapping at the box of shame but chose Maybe. to betray Manethrin by working in secret to halt or delay the response from the allied nations and this ultimately led to the annihilation of King Amon's army uh, and the nation of Manethrin perished um, so when I say King Amon or Manethrin same, same thing uh, and yeah. I don't know why I called him an asshole Amen I was is, thinking of the uh, wrong person whenever I said it but no, King but yeah. Amon was no, yeah. you're, you were thinking King Lamon. Yeah, Lamon was a complete King Lame That guy Amen. was a fuck. No redeemable quality. The lame Amon. But, yes, and when the details of her treachery became known to the Hall of the Tower, the Sinners oh, voted to her strip her of her staff and stole. Keep that in mind. Staff and stole. Yep. She is only the second Amulet. I mean, she had both. Yep. The stole and the staff. And was condemned to being stilled. 
And then she was then kept in the White Tower and forced uh, to the kitchens uh, to labor as a scullery maid and then died three years later. Because they didn't <sighs> know about aftercare. Yeah, at that they time. didn't care about aftercare. There, was only, there were only so many people in the, the White Tower who were into BDSM at that time. They didn't realize <laughs> how important the aftercare was to the act. They were like 50 shades of gray. They were the 50 shades of gray people rather than the people who were actually in the world. 50 shades of gray sisters. Yeah. (laughs) 50 shades of gray, Aja. Oh my God. (laughs) There's your parody right there. I love it. Son of a bitch. Oh my God. (sighs) Okay, so who's got next? Who's got the next one? Uh, I have another one. So this also goes back to the sisters in the White Tower. Uh, Though, not necessarily, yeah, long before the White Tower itself was formed, not before there were Aes Sedai, not before there, you know, were magic users and everything, but certainly long before the White Tower was raised, if you will, um, the, what they now use as the Oath Rod, as a thing that they use to convince the world that Aes Sedai are on their side that they are to be trusted, that they are sort of the pinnacle of honesty and things like that, was actually confirmed at some point in the books to have been used on criminals and was called the binding rod rather than the oath rod. And it actually effectively in some ways gets used for its original purpose at some point when the sisters are trying to find the Black Aja in their midst, when they are taken, when they retake their three oaths effectively, and they have to take the oaths on the oath rod to unbind themselves, and then need to retake them, including an additional one, which then binds them to whatever sister is making them go ahead and take the oath. And it's one of the, I love that. One rod to bind them all. Yep. Um, Yeah, White Tower bondage. I like it. Uh, But yeah, so it's definitely one of those things where I love, again, just that, that bringing it back around that Robert Jordan does of he talks about regularly in the early books about we don't even know whether we're using these things right. The yes. three rings in the basement of the tower, we have no idea whether this was used for testing. We just thought it was a good idea when we found them and we're like, dope, let's do this. You know, this, that, and the other thing, we have no idea what they actually did in the Age of Legends. We just found them, did our best approximation of what the fuck they're supposed to do and then used it for the best like method that, or the, the best purpose that we have nowadays that we determined that thing fucking does. You know, I that's great. I love I love this this element of the story at, from a storytelling perspective. Yes. Okay. From the perspective of a writer, of someone who is building a world and creating stories that are compelling and relatable. I love this. It is yes. a brilliant mechanism but reading the story oh my god i hate the oath rod oh it's I hate terrible it so I much i hate the oath rod i'm looking at this going who would be that stupid who would be that dumb and then i think about okay the origins of when they started using it after you know sidine was tainted and men started to go insane and they wanted to prove to the world that they were still trustworthy rather than just being trustworthy and sticking to their guns and having some sort of character you know stability and sturdiness they were just like oh look i'm holding this rod channel into it now i can't lie (laughs) well and i love how backwards that is because when it comes right down to it nobody trusts them anyway at this point because everybody's like wait it's not about your character it's about this oath you made that you can wriggle out of because your character's bullshit. Well, the it, truth that you tell me isn't the truth that I'm actually hearing. Exactly. So you, you can't lie. I almost, I almost wonder if all, 
if uh, if uh, Robert Jordan was like taking notes from Obi Wan, it's like, oh, oh yeah. the truths we hear depend greatly on our point of view. That's really good. <laughs> good job there, Jedi Master. It's yep. and that's and that's what I think. Ultimately, that's why I hate that particular thing. Like, make no weapons for someone to kill another with. Okay, cool. I can see that one. That's a good yeah, one. How do you, that one, the whole oath rod bothers the shit out of me. Because how do you define that? Well, and there is rumor. I don't know that it's ever been confirmed or not. And this may be another one of those little known facts. That the cause or start of the use of the oath rod is a maneuvering by the shadow to weaken the white tower oh yeah for the last battle yeah but again it's one of those things where how do you define it, it, again there's so much room for error and so much room for everything that they leave in those oaths that it just is so because again Put your warder in danger for somebody that you want to kill. The second your warder's in danger, you can just murder them with the power. Uh, if you don't know that the weapon is going to be used to kill someone else, can you still make it? Because if you, you can believe the thing is true, saying, yeah, right? You, you can, can say it because exactly. you believe it's true. Right. And so again, there's so much wiggle room and so much like wool, just like wool. dodgy. So much wool, exactly. So much wool that goes into all of this. That that again, it's almost like these odes are completely useless. They no, they they are. They absolutely are, and that's the thing. I I don't know. Again, I wouldn't say utterly useless because I like. The scenes in the White Tower where they're asking the sisters direct questions. Well, and they can't physically tell the lie. That's why I say, that's why I say it's a brilliant storytelling mechanism. Yeah. Like it's it's absolutely I I love it. I absolutely from a storytelling love mechanism. Where they tell uh the sister that she needs to say that like the the Red Sisters didn't have anything to do with Logan, and she physically can't do it, and she can't breathe. And she starts like, yeah, like I strangling. love that scene so much because again, the Red Sister in the room knows for a fact that yeah. she didn't have anything to do with it, and the likelihood that the Red Aja had something to do with it without her is extremely small but this sister believes it so hard that she can't because she heard it breathe. from low gain well and not only that she's been hearing it the whole time it's a plausible explanation for what's going on it's not even a situation where she can just look at low gain and be like you're a lying sack of shit i don't believe a thing that comes out of your mouth like she believes it well, and remember, at this point in time, Elida has already blackened the eye of the oh, Red yeah. Aja, so to speak. 100%. By and being so people believe an impulsive path. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> by being as black as you can be without actually being black. <laughs> I'd name you Dark Friend, too, but, but I think the Dark Lord would the dark reject one. you. <laughs> Shit, dude. Yeah. That's the sickest burn. We need to do an episode on it. sick it's burns. So good. And that's got to be number one. Sorry. <laughs> that's just all hey. there is to it. Hey, why why do stone dogs uh, always get put on guard duty? <coughs> why is that? Because even when they have a goal, their feet are still so slow. Oh! <laughs> Wait, why, why do, do maidens, maidens use have hand talk? Because even hand when talk. they're not talking, they're they still have to talk. <laughs> uh, that's the sickest. I love that one so much. That one might be my. It's even I love with the Elida one. Even with the Elida one, which is so high up on the list, the maiden hand talk one might be. That's a my good one. Favorite bird. That's a good one. Uh, 
Which is funny because he doesn't even win that exchange. Right. But we well, don't like he as he as non Aiel, we don't actually like know the, the I'm extent gonna say, of the burn that she gives back to him. And it's so funny. That, I'm gonna like, say oh, he still so got good. laid that night. Oh he did. Oh he did he did. At the very least, he played hours of Maiden's Kiss. I mean <laughs> maybe not that, but he definitely got <laughs> some that night. <laughs> Hey, when you get an entire group of people to bang on their shields, you go and get your shield. You go to bang on something. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, who's God. next? I lost track. How many do we do? Have we even? We got have six. Ten? We're at six. six, which is actually not bad. <laughs> um, but we promised the people ten. You we have didn't one, Josh. Promise anything. Does anyone else have one immediately at hand that right. they would like to bring up that is, you know, mild? Here's one. Hit, hit it. So we we learn through Egwene's point of view, uh, not Egwene, Elaine's point of view about the secret of the Sea Folk Windfinders that, as far as we can tell, they think has been kept a secret. That's why they don't allow Aes to die on the ships right They're like no stay away we have a secret it, blah, no, blah, stop, blah. Don't. but not... there is a reason to believe that much like the kin that the white tower knows about the secret of the wind finders and that that knowledge is hidden in the 13th depository the 13th uh, depository Yep, the thirteenth suppository. <laughs> uh, because there's there's a pattern uh, amongst the librarians for the thirteenth suppository that uh, <laughs> after they're brought in, all of the Athan Mir sisters have ended up not only as members of the Brown Aja, but also as archivists of the secret histories in the thirteenth suppository, especially since Zamala is. Fairly young for Aes Sedai and weak in the one power. Huh. So they, maybe they didn't know about it, but once they learned about it, it was in it was like included in the histories. But it was sealed in the 13th depository amongst a ton of other fucking scandalous make Watergate look like nothing shit <laughs> that the White Tower has done. Because it's also where the records of um this might be another one in case you didn't know, even though it's put out in the books, that the White Tower has actually not survived every attack completely unscathed. That right. is a completely fabricated lie. There is um, there is an army of Trollocs led by Dreadlords that plundered and burned part of the White Tower. Uh, the, an army made up of the followers of the False Dragon, uh, Guier, Guier, whatever, Amalasan um, reached the White Tower uh, Puppet Amberlands, the scandal around uh, Sheen uh, Chunla, as I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, the uh, identified vileness at the end of the IL war that resulted in the stilling of Eight Minuka Channel, including a name you should recognize, Owen. If you don't recognize oh. that, then there's somebody's mustaches that you should go and tug. Dude! And ask about it. Are you serious right now? Yeah. The, the the event that happened, he was stilled along with seven other men that could channel, and that event is sealed away in the 13th depository and is referred to as the vileness. After, I had at the no end of the idea Iowa. that that was Owen from Tom's nephew. Yep. Damn! The, vile, the vileness is a term used by the Aes Sedai to refer to a period of treachery and murder that occurred between the years 979 NE and 985 NE. Began with the discovery that the Black Aja that the dragon, by the Black Aja that the dragon had been reborn, followed by a pogrom aimed at uh, gentling or killing as many male channelers as possible throughout the world. During the six year period, over 2,000 men and boys would lose their lives along with dozens of Aes Sedai and sisters and two Amberlins. Wow. And it can, uh, the violence also deepened already existing animosities between uh, factions within the White Tower, most notably between the Red Damn. and Blue Aja. That is straight from what.fandom.com, which seems uh, for the most part to be reliable, even though they won't fix their picture of the flag of Aradomon. 
you know, do you? We pointed out a thousand fucking times. It's in the description, but no, just fucking leave the goddamn picture the way it is. Wrong. They're gonna leave it because it's a fan art. Okay, it's artist interpretation. Artist interpretation of wrong. <laughs> it's not even close to right. I I'm gonna say this one too though. Um, this is a little known fact because. And this is something that just actually popped into our live chat. Daniel. It's not accurate. What? It's not accurate. You're not accurate. What are you talking about? There was just a link and a reference. It's theory land. It's yeah. not theory land. Look at it. It's in an interview with Brandon. Actual it quotes is. with Brando Sando. And I can call him that because we're friends. Kind of. We played magic once. Flexing. Yeah, I hear you flexing. <laughs> he kicked my ass. Does that count? Sort of. I don't... This is not... No. <laughs> well, Harriet did talk him out of it according to the reference... That was, okay, so what we're talking about here is it was just dropped in our live chat that Daniel was originally a fourth Taviran. Daniel was going to be participating along with uh, the, the, the trio. It was supposed to be a quartet. And then Harriet eventually said, look, it's too much. Take it out. Convinced uh, uh, Mr. Rigney to reduce the number of Taviran and he did so so now we got Rand, Matt, and Perrin but the fourth Taviran was, did receive a coin and he was the only one who was quote, okay to use his coin uh, yeah, except, uh, okay uh, 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 uh. and Daniel's head is the gears are grinding right now he's like it's not that they're grinding it's that i mean honestly okay it's <sighs> so two things about this particular one. number one uh in the story that we actually get perrin relatively early on shows that he is impressive in some way with the wolf brothers okay. or with the wolf brotherness Matt shows that he is sort of important in many different ways in a number of different fashions, including the fact that he's the one who then picks up the dagger. Um, and Rand shows that he's important at least by the end of the book by being literally the fucking dragon reborn. All of those things happen after they leave the two rivers. Accurate. I well, here's the that. thing. Harriet is the one, according to the story, according to this interview, whatever you want to call it, is the one that looked at RJ and said she get rid of him because he doesn't do anything for the story. Exactly. And that well, the heroics that... that he would have accomplished are actually transferred over and accomplished across the three uh, Taviran. Right. There's also the thought amongst uh, members or sections of the fandom that this actually isn't true. This is a BS story between, as an inside joke between <laughs> RJ BS. and Harriet about the cover art, mostly because the concept of the three heroes seems to work better with the mythology that RJ used to develop them. Yes. Well, and well, and, and also just enough there. That in the in the interview, Brandon Sanderson doesn't say that it was in his notes. He says that Harriet told him about this, That's which accurate. I'm not saying that Harriet would lie necessarily but she might fuck with the brand a little she bit. might like she might i think that would be a, joke. a fun exactly i feel like that would be a fun fuck with brandon that doesn't hurt anybody and it doesn't and do with any the damage whole... to the story that robert jordan's legacy and his story are still a hundred percent intact and it's not in the fucking notes i would say this too and with the whole cover art you know, the cover art was so inaccurate to the story. For a number of the books, yeah. And always has been. And it's it's almost become nuanced at this point in time. You almost sure. you almost have to have that original cover art, even though it's so not accurate. But 
with that being said, this creates that small gap of believability. Well, it's also a question of, I mean, what is that shot exactly from? Is that them actually leaving the two rivers? Tar and ferry, because you can see the, the drag car. Okay, and there was nobody else in Tarn Ferry who had a horse. Nobody. There's nobody in no Tarn Ferry. No one in Tarn Ferry owns Not horses. a single person in Tarn I mean, Ferry. No, it's, it's one of those things that they you can make, you can make excuses on. and arguments. They don't like horses, they're like fairies. Like, again, it's, and again, if there's a drag car in the sky, they're not in Tarn Ferry when the drag car shows up. They're not in Tarn Ferry in the cover of the book. Your mom's in Tarn Ferry. Okay, what? Why do you say that, Andrew? There's not, nothing about the illustration of the cover of the book puts them in Terran Ferry. It puts them on the way to Terran Ferry. Not, sorry, not the one where there's too many people. No, uh. the one that's blue, <laughs> where it's actually got the right number of humans. There, they are on the road, uh, by some trees. Which is the one that the ferry. extra one that's the yellow <laughs> one. They are actually in a town. <laughs> I love this Again, show. You guys are awesome. You know what? Thank you so much. Wait, wait, do we get all 10? We didn't get 10. We, got we seven, didn't get 10. That's Screw okay. you. You know what? You don't get 10. You know why? Because my mama said, leave them wanting more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Little known facts about the Wheel of Time, number eight. No. I no. am in no. the books. No. no, you're not. Number I nine. I just realized I Daniel didn't get any of my loaned out copies of Eye of the World back because I was trying to look at the art. In the books. <laughs> That's not true. And number one, Andrew stars as Bajan Mihail in the books and is a Taviran. You're welcome. That's, none of those are accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we only get through eight. We only got through seven, which is what? totally fine. I'm okay with that. We borrowed one from Mashadi, which I don't even agree with. So we only went around twice, and then one of us and gave then an you extra. Did one one extra one. Yeah, it's not extra. It's it's within the count. Sorry. Oh, Correct. okay. I got one. We did one more than so wait, two. I got another one. Sir. They're generally, they were generally one. thought that they were supposed to be kind of small, so we didn't spend forever talking about them so we could do 10. The, Andrew, the wolf Andrew, brother. Andrew. I didn't say it was a sound problem. Do? What we do? All right, let's do another one and then All right, quickly just let's two go. more. The wolf brother that Perrin finds, who's gone loco, right? He's all yes. wolf, no more human. Yes. Shows back up. In the last battle, yeah. Perrin is actually in the dream world when he's doing his little flop, flop, flop around the dream world. There's a wolf that's following him, and he's able to identify this person wow. as the boy he knew or met and let free. Gnome, gnome shows back up as a wolf who's embraced himself as a wolf. And, and it's actually a very interesting, dream. it's actually a real interesting dynamic for Perrin because he now knows Elias, who avoids the world of dreams, and Gnome, who has dived headfirst in and embraced himself in the world of dreams as a full-on wolf. And Perrin realizes, I have two mentors. I have a human mentor and a wolf mentor, and I have to find a balance between the two. He already had a wolf mentor. Your His mom's name was a Hopper. wolf mentor. His name was yeah, Hopper. That, that didn't fucking last long, did it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Initially. Oh. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I'm gonna, like, don't get me wrong. I love Hopper because of what happens with Hopper later. Eye of the World Hopper. Well, yeah. No, that's I'm what, like, yeah, that's. Well, sucks, I was talking about Wolf but, Dream Hopper. Not okay. like actual alive. Yeah, sure. Like everybody's like, oh, Hopper dying in book Wolf one Street. is the saddest scene I've ever seen. And I'm like, you don't even know Hopper in book one. <laughs> you don't even like go crying. here. That's like crying because like a guy, a stranger people, you don't know in Colorado's grandma died. Like people who say that's the saddest them. scene are people who are rereading the series and know 
yeah. Popper's significance. Now, if you put on that, like this scene is super, it's like the saddest scene after, as part of a reread, sure. Sure. Fine. Fair enough argument. I disagree, but fair enough argument. If you're a first time reader and you're fair. like, Hopper dying was the saddest thing I've ever seen, and you don't have like a history with wolves and an abounding love for wolves, it's kind of like, but why though? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 fucking, I fucking see it. <laughs> I fucking, I fucking see why? the chat. Daniel, do you have another potentially lesser known? I don't. I, I was actually good right. with being done cool. before 10. Here's, here's I another one. The people wanting more. Here's no, because the title is going to be 10, so we got to have 10. I'm willing but to be clickbaity. Yeah. I'm willing to be 10. 10. Okay, fine. I have I mean, another I'm, one. I'm willing to be clickbaity, but not quite that. Do you want to do yours last? I want to do it right now. Go for it. Tom and Moraine have a romantic role. <laughs> there's That's your, little known there's prior your to the last one. My disappointment father. is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. <laughs> no, I, uh, I actually do have another one. Um, the There is a stark parallel uh, from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe uh, to the visions that we see in... Uh, in Rand's trip through the crystal, the crystal columns, um, because there's actually the the one of the very first ancestors that we see that Rand goes back into uh, is a servant of Lanfear, back before she is a Forsaken, uh, before she turns to the shadow, right? And their progress in learning and uh whatnot is uh eventually what causes the boar in the dark one's prison uh and allows him to go ahead and fuck up the world uh in the magician's nephew there is actually a story about a servant and a magician who literally allow the world to be tainted by dark magic in their experimentation Damn. with her ring. Because in The Magician's Nephew, it's very along the same lines of Lord of the Rings, where the rings themselves aren't good or bad, but the people that they are gifted to then control how the magic is used. And one of the people, the sort of original sin, if you will, in Narnia, is this particular witch who is using the ring basically experimentally again and taps into something that she should not and brings dark magic into the world. And then in the end, she is basically reincarnated as the witch in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but she has forgotten everything, whereas Aslan has not. Do not cite the old magic to me, which I was there. <laughs> I was, was there written. when it was God. That's such a good line. Such a good fucking oh, line. Oh. All right, fine. Here's number 10, and it's going to be a bit of an homage to Morshadi, who was almost right about the first Amar Amarlin ever stilled. He actually gave the second Amarlin that was ever stilled, which, of course, was <laughs> Bonewin. Merigadin, I don't know how to say your last name. Doesn't matter. You were stilled in a terrible person, so who cares? Uh, she was the second ever Amarlin stilled, also of the Red Aja. So not a great trap record, Red two Aja. Two for two. Um, but she was stilled because during the same year that Gier Amalasin declared himself the Dragon Reborn, which we now know was false, he was not. <laughs> um, Bo yeah. Bonewin was ruling over the White Tower. She ruled for 50 years, one of the longest stints in the history of the White Tower as Amarlin's seat. But she may she continuously attempted to control Otter Hawkwing and make him a puppet, and it ultimately backfired, resulting in his siege on uh, Tarvalon. And when all that came to light, she was removed from power, stripped of stole and staff. So she was also in possession of both, stripped of stole and staff, and replaced with Deanne uh, Armon from the Blue Aja. And this was quite likely, uh, if not the, the initial factor, 
but one of the uh, very heavily adding factors of the animosity between the Reds and the Blues. So, indeed, uh, she was also the last Amarillan to ever be raised from the Red before Elida was. So they're technically fucking like three for three, though the last one was still <laughs> by this fucking Sean Chan. Not still, but you know, removed from power. <laughs> So oh, the Red Aja, you got a fucking terrible track record there, with the yeah, fucking. Though I will throw out there credit where credit is due. It is you also won't. something to be said. We do not get a full lin- like a uh, line of Amerlins of this Amerlin ruled for exactly this amount of time and then was succeeded True. by this one and then blah blah blah. It is entirely possible, and given how many of them were in power when they got stilled, that the Reds really just were Oberlin for a lot of the time. Oh, and <laughs> to make it even better for them, before Suwon Sanche, Tetsuwan and Bonewin were the only Oberlins to ever be officially stilled and stripped of their stolen staff. Yep. The only and one. So again, I I would love to see. I I doubt it exists because officially, probably Robert Jordan yeah, officially didn't actually put one together. Um, is a list of uh, Amerlins, what Aja they came from, and how long they were in power. Because you know, if we could see that the uh, the Red Aja was actually in power for like two thirds of the time that the tower's been around. Or even like one third of the time the tower has been around, they only make one of the Ajas. If they're in power that much, it's kind of likely that they well, would see the most still in well, kind of the stuff. first. The first Amarlin was in ninety eight A B. Ratio. When we don't know when yeah, when she left, and but, we don't know when Tetsuan started, but Tetsuan's reign ended in twelve hundred A B. Here's, and here's if Bowman about... was known as one of the longest sitting Amerlins, right. it can be relatively realistically assumed that Alassan Tashar, the first Amerlin, reigned for a long time and Tetsuan didn't reign that long, meaning that combined the Reds as Amerlin probably reigned somewhere around 100 years or less. Which, which makes sense that the Reds would have that many that. Amerlins. There, there's because... no way to prove that, but I would... Based well, off exactly. of what I That's have said, I would, we don't the know popular... that, but I would feel safe saying they've reigned for, in total, pre Elida, the Reds only had control of the arm in the seat for roughly approximately 100 years or so or less. I, I would be willing to say more simply because the Red Aja's main goal or purpose is to eliminate the threat to the world by stilling or I'm sorry, by gentling men who can channel. This is a very popular subject early on in the foundations of the White Tower. Therefore, which is the same reason why blue Omerlins are so popular at the time that we get to in the books, because blues are the most passionate social justice warriors. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. That's kind of their shtick. It's, we have the passion to dedicate ourselves to a particular cause. Like that's just kind of how it is. They don't, they, they can latch on to whatever the popular uh, subject du jour is and make that their cause and use that to establish a seat of power. Early on, it was easy. We don't know how many red Amarillans there were. We only know that two of them were still for being dickheads <laughs> and yeah, they were so what fandom.com's like write-ups of the characters and their listing of their time served is they're they're not together because their description of tetsuan says that she arrived as a novice uh, around 1105 ab uh was raised to Aes Sedai around 1115 ab but then they also say that she was raised to the Amazon seat around 1200 AB. So at most, if whenever she was raised to Aes Sedai within that year, she was raised to Amarlin. At most, according to their, their table breakdown that lists when people, when Amarlin took the seat and left the seat, at best, she reigned for 75 years. 
And then you had an unknown blue Aja sister that reigned from 1200 AB to 1250, blah, 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 until Bonewin takes over in uh, 939 FY and leaves in 992 here's, FY. Here's another thing that we have to take into account when we're looking at these. There are two other, there is at least one other unknown Aja that could have been read as well. But when we're looking at Aes Sedai histories, you have to take into account the fact that Aes Sedai have no qualms about removing information in order to save face and or look good further down the road. They're actually one of the few groups that have the ability to say 200 years from now, someone's going to see this. I'm going to remove this bit of information that makes us look bad so I, that people look back and see us always as a benevolent, wonderful organization. I'm going to jump but, in here, Josh, with two things. Number one, I like your point and I take it, but the Watt Wiki fandom doesn't really give a shit about what you removed. They know <laughs> it because Robert Jordan either told it to us or he did. Um, From the so, perspective of the people within the story. I agree with you on that <laughs> one. I was talking about someone as someone outside of the story intentionally. I was I was actually saying that as someone outside of the story, we have a certain amount of information. Uh, and to Andrew's point, you are 100% right, as at least as far as what I can find. There are a bunch of listings of Amerlins for all of the other Ajats. There are only three for the Reds. And so it's not like they're only putting in, you know, the ones specifically mentioned in the books as like, if it gets talked about in the history, like there are a bunch in there that I don't recognize as being mm. from the books. They're clearly from Robert Jordan's notes of like, you know, the big wheel of time glossary or like wheel of time, whatever. Whereas there are only the three red sisters that are listed as Omerlins. And so, yeah, they actually did a really bad job of being Omerlins and not getting stilt. So, <laughs> like a thought, super bad job of what, being Omerlins. And I highly be. doubt the only one that's in between those that they we don't know the Aja of, except for the original Amerlin, is Anghara. And considering that Isabel, the ruler of Dal Colleen, had enough power to make that Emerlin come to her, I find it highly, uh, highly unrealistic and unbelievable that sh that uh, Anghara was of the red. Sure. No, I I can I can see that. All right, Josh, what do you got? I was just gonna say final thoughts when it comes to little known facts of the Wheel of Time. That's actually kind of a nuance. It's it's so like. It's ridiculous because it's such a big story and Robert Jordan did such an amazing job of writing such an in-depth and detailed wor world that That's you know, when we do these right things there. we say little known <laughs> facts from the things you didn't know about the wheel. Well, no, duh. No, <laughs> come on. You can read this series and we have read this series dozens of times and there's never been a... I would defy anyone in the world, no matter what reread they're on, to tell me that they read the series and did not and didn't come find up with something little new. known facts. Yeah, exactly. No matter how many times. <laughs> yeah, you Sarah, read. did you find anything new? Yeah. On like your 829th reread? Yeah. Well, and of course, just think about how much how how much you figure out and find out when you talk to other people. Y'all so, have blown my mind about shit that I didn't notice in the story <laughs> so many times. And I know I've done the same. It's like, what is it that your brain latches onto that yeah. you find out in your fourth reread that just your brain latches onto it that you never noticed before? And then you go on a podcast with your buddies or you're working <laughs> on a television show or you fucking get a map of something and you go, wait, Shinar's that fucking big? Like, just that kind of stuff that you don't latch onto at all until you get this piece of whatever and your buddies blow your mind. So, like, what the for fuck? those of you listening, 
I want you to comment. What was that moment for you? Yeah. When you're on your most recent reread and you're going, holy crap, I've read this how many times now? And I never noticed that. What was that moment? Go ahead and comment down below. And if Let there were 87 of them, throw 87 of them on there. Do All it. 87. Different comments, each one. Help our metrics. Yeah, you know. each comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number them so that we can respond. But I want 87 comments in a row. Indeed. From one yeah. person. But From that's, one person. That's my final thought. You know, it's so awesome to go through these and look for these little known facts and these little subtle weirdnesses. And I love it. And I, I really yeah. appreciate being able to do that. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's it's just one of those things like saying ten things you did not you may or you may not know about the Wheel of Time. Obviously, the title's clickbaity. It's fucking meant to be clickbaity. Yeah, we and did if that. You're just gonna sit there and comment. Purpose. If you're just gonna sit there and comment like this shit was clickbait, <laughs> I knew all of this. One, he, listen yeah, to the episode. It's we tell you that. <laughs> Two, unless you have a photographic memory or a didactic memory like Captain America or whatever, it might be the same thing, whatever. Uh, I'm going to call bullshit because some of this shit didactic. only ever shows up across 15 books one time. Yeah. And if you knew right off the head that Tetsuan was the first ever disposed Amerlin and of the red and why, and you just knew everything, um, then I'm concerned for your health. Stop it. Get some help because <laughs> there's there's like being it. a fan and there's like uh, that's I mean now if you did actually know the one you know you know kudos <laughs> there's to there's being in the fan dumb and then there's being a dumb fan. <laughs> I see but, what you did there, but I mean I mean some of the it, a lot of it ultimately just depends on what sticks in your head and what doesn't stick in your head Certainly. and it might yeah. be that most of these did stick in your head when you read them and. Uh, it didn't for everybody else or most everybody else or whoever else it didn't because a lot of the stuff we brought up I don't think is stuff it may be stuff that stuck in our heads or it may be stuff that we were like you know now that I think about it I'd never thought about that but yep. hopefully at least one of the things is something that you didn't know if you sat here for 95% of the episode going you guys are morons I knew all this already yeah. um, then you're more than welcome to start your own po own podcast called what know it all and and do your and thing. be super awesome go for it if you know absolutely everything there is to know about will of time then go for it and challenge everybody have so, fun enjoy yourself thank you all for tuning in thank you all for why am i so us. combative this episode i don't know <laughs> if you want more action more taint more awesomeness and more wheel of timiness Go to our website, blacktowerpod.com. It's got links to everything pertaining to the Black Tower. Say you don't want it something do. pertaining to the Black Tower, then why are you here? That's weird. Yeah, but it's enough. okay. We won't judge you. Go to thegreatblight.com where we you call can them find weird. Wheel of Time content creators <laughs> across the whole spectrum. Thank you so much for tuning. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you much for being. Thank you much for awesome. I have been Josh. Uh, I have been Andrew. And I have been <laughs> Daniel. And from all of us here at the Black Tower, again, thank you so much. Josh said it great, but I, I just always want to say thank you again. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we do this. We love you all. Uh, we hope that you're having an amazing day. We hope that everything is going your way. <laughs> Uh, we hope that you have met zero Dijin who have led you down a path to, to fuckery. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> and uh, for all of you listening live, because you haven't heard it here, I want to make sure you guys do. Uh, there is, of course, that new merch uh, available at New Creations by Jen. There'll be a plug for New Creations by Jen in the uh, actual episode that goes out publicly but you can actually go and grab uh, the new design, Two Rivers Sniper, which is a super fucking dope uh, from New Creations by Jen. Uh, and you can get a quick link to our section of New Creations by Jen on our website. The, uh, you'll see the, the link. The Althor Archery is also available at our yeah. spread shirt. Althor Archery Academy mm -hmm. is available at our spread shirt. Um, so is go the, check that out as well. Is the other one there? It's key. 
the the the, the focus one. one. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Why? Why am I being like secretive? Like this part isn't included in the episode of the patrons. I've already. I don't seen know what you're image. talking about. Focus, uh, on, the focus flame. on the flame. With the hand and the flame. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The flame and the hand. yeah. That's up. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is that one's on uh, on spreadshirt? That's on spreadshirt. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Look on spreadshirt. Generally, if it's a more intricate designs. or complex or like very drastically different across uh, things yes. design, you can find it on spreadshirt when it goes live. Yes. Uh, some of the more I don't want to say simpler stuff because definitely Jen can handle a new creation by Jen. They can handle the stuff, but it's all about it's the just format. a different style of design. Format. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a there's some that she can easily design. port over from what she gets sent from us, and there's some that aren't as easy to port over uh, to what they have to do. But correction, I know I know your, your design. <laughs> all right, but yeah, <laughs> thanks thank everybody you guys for listening live. We will see you again next week or you will see us or however you want to word it. Go Indeed. enjoy the Dusty Wheel uh, tonight. And then I hope to see you all there on the 28th, yes. even though I won't physically be able to see you. And I'll probably be so engrossed in the conversation that I forget the chat's a thing. So I'll try not it to. It happens. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much. That's it. Bye.